we go on with advanced reaction engineering. Today, we will be looking at some practice problems in energy balance. The problem we would like to take is uh, an interesting exercise. Let me just explain the background to this exercise and then uh, we will look at the problem itself. You have nitrogen N 2 O 4 giving you twice N O 2 and twice N O 2 giving you N 2 O 4. So, this is the reaction. Now, this these two reactions 1 and 2 they are considered to be instantaneous. In the sense at any instant of time N 2 O 4 and N O 2 exist in equilibrium. Okay. If you look at some data on this system data looks like this N O 2 N 2 O 4. So, you have delta H f 7.96 2.23 delta G 12.26 23.4 C p specific heat 12.5 and 25 units are K cal per mole, K cal per mole, this is calories per mole degree K. Okay. Since this reaction is instantaneous, it is of interest to us to see whether we can use this reactions to perform some useful function. Two functions which have great interest to society is space heating and of course, production of electrical energy or power. Now, space heating as you all will know is uh, requires uh, low temperature heat basically okay. and generally low temperature heat is available there is an abundance of low temperature heat particularly in the industry. Therefore, if you want to do space heating and if you can make use of this low temperature heat then you will probably be able to do it very really economically. Okay. Now, if it comes to work of course, we are limited by the first law and uh, we are also to uh, content with the fact that steam which is the working fluid in our engines uh, in the power plants steam has a very large vapor, water has a very large vapor pressure. Therefore, if you want to go to high temperatures you necessarily have to go to very high pressures as a result very high pressure equipment expensive and so on and related hazards of uh, etcetera. So, in the, it is in this context uh, we have devised this exercise and uh, to see you know how we can learn uh, to use uh, certain properties of substances that uh, exist around us for some functions that we might think is of use to us that is the context. Let us put this context uh, to some use that we are looking at by let us say as an example we want to use for space heating application. What is meant by space heating application let me just uh, draw what might be the let us say we have a device. Okay. So, we have here a okay. All right. 
So, we have a pump let us say this is this is going from N 2 O 4 going to twice N O 2. Okay. N 2 O 4 going to twice N O 2. This is at 80 degrees C and this is at 20 degrees C. Okay. So, material is coming in like this and going out like this. So, what we expect is that it uh, picks up heat at 80 degree centigrade, it picks up heat say let us say Q 1 and then at 20 it gives out that heat Q 2 and you, you have a moisture remover moisture. The idea of this moisture absorber is that in case there is some moisture that gets into the system, we should get rid of it because N 2 O 4 and N O 2 are very corrosive gases, we really do not want any moisture at all. Okay. So, in essence what we are trying to say here is that if you have a device which is able to pick up heat from a low temperature source and this N 2 O 4 reaction goes towards in, in the appropriate direction and then here at this low temperature it is uh, giving that heat and therefore, it is able to reverse that reaction. Okay. Now, we can calculate we can calculate based on the thermodynamics that is given to us that K p K p at 80 C is 5.8 and K p at 20 C is 0.45. Okay. K p at 20 C is 0.45 and uh, so, what, what it means is that this, this reaction at 80 C the K p is 5.8 and at 20 C K p is 4 which means what? This is an endothermic reaction that means N 2 O 4 if it has to go to N O 2 you have to supply heat and then when you reduce the temperature the reaction reverses itself releasing that heat. Basically, it is this uh, instantaneous ability for this reaction to you know go both ways depending upon the temperature at which the environment is available it is able to we are able to pick up heat and remove and supply heat to the source uh, to the uh, environment of our interest. So, our uh, this, this whole exercise is to be to quantitatively evaluate what is the ability of a working fluid like N 2 O 4 N O 2 to work as a, uh, as a as a means of recovering heat from a low temperature source and supplying it to us from a source at 80 and supplying it to a consumer at 20. The consumer at 20 is space heating application. The source 80 degree C might be a source of uh, I mean uh, waste fluids that might be available in an environment may be a factory and so on. Okay. So, this is the application that we are trying to evaluate in this exercise. Okay. Now, how do we actualize this in a process? After all, you have to actualize this. How do we actualize this? To actualize this, what is suggested is you have two fluid beds. Okay. Okay. and you are your fluids are moving between ok. So, you have fluids coming in going through like this and then once again it is coming in and going through like this ok. So, it comes out like this and goes in like this and comes out like this. In other words what we are saying is that we we have we have a hot th this is uh, at 80 and this is uh, so this is coming out at 20 so what is it that we are doing so we have let's say air available at uh, uh, at 80 okay and we contact that with uh, with this cooling this coil where 80 degrees C temperature is taken up by this gases N 2 O 4 going to N O 2 and then that is released to air this is another air stream uh, to so that you know 20 if it is 20 coming in it will probably go out at 30 let us say. So, that air gets heated and that is how we uh, 
realize this phase heating application. So, let us model this, let us model this, there are two environments, let us model this like this, there are two environments, let us say environment 1 okay, and environment 2. The environment 1 is at 80, environment 2 at, at 20. You have fluids moving between the two, okay. Where the reaction N 2 O 4 giving you 2 N O 2 takes place. In both cases, it is the same reaction taking place, okay, twice N O 2. Okay. I call this environment as E and this environment as F. Therefore, you have so it is going like this. So, it is E A, I will call it E A and E B. Okay. All right. I call this as A, I call this as B okay. and then F A and F B are coming out. Okay. So, what is the system? In, we have an environment at 80 degree C okay, which we call as E and we have another environment as 20 which we call as F and we have these fluids uh, which contains N 2 O 4, N O 2 and so on. We call this E A, E B is what is going from uh, E to F and as it encounters a lower temperature immediately the reaction uh, takes place. So, that the composition changes and F A F B come out. Okay. Now, since the reactions are instantaneous what does it mean? When the reaction is instantaneous it means that K P equal to P B squared divided by P A. Okay. This equality applies we all understand this from thermodynamics that if a reaction is instantaneous the compositions of the leaving streams E A and E B will be at equilibrium corresponding to 80 degree centigrade. Okay. Similarly, we can say this is uh, this is K P at 80 similarly K P at 20 okay, also equal to P B squared divided by P A on this this equality whether it is 20 and 80 should hold because the reaction is instantaneous. Therefore, the compositions of the leaving streams must be corresponding to the equilibrium compositions. Okay. Our interest of course, is to use this uh, reaction and uh, recover some energy. So, we need what is called as to understand what are these flows E A and E B. So, in this particular case what is mentioned is that E A it says the, the problem states that the nitrogen that is flowing in this in the, in the stream the amount of nitrogen here whether it is E A and E B or F A and F B total amount of nitrogen is 1 mole. Okay. It is 1 mole per second is the total amount of nitrogen that is what is specified. Now, we know that if you look at E A if you look at stream E A here this stream E A this stream E I mean coming out of equipment E it has this is this is N O N 2 O 4 and this is N O 2. Okay. Therefore, the amount of nitrogen here for every mole of this contains 1 mole of nitrogen, but every mole of this contains half a mole of nitrogen. So, if E A and E B are the molar flows of A and B coming out of environment E, then what is given to us is E A plus E B by 2 is 1. So, what is the problem statement? Problem states that we have 1 mole per second of nitrogen flowing in the circuit. That means, what I am saying is that this 1 mole of nitrogen it can be partially as N 2 O 4 or partially as N O 2 depending upon the conditions of the environment, but the total nitrogen in the system is fixed which is 1 mole per second. So, 1 mole per second is circulating, but as it leaves E I mean uh, environment E there will be certain compositions of N 2 O 4 and N O 2, while it leaves F there will be different compositions of N O 2 and N O 2 and N, N 2 O 4. The reason being that the temperature at 80 degrees and 20 degrees the equilibrium compositions as uh, determined by thermodynamics are different. So, what is Y A by definition? Okay. And what is Y B? All right. Now, we also know that K P I am talking about environment E now K P equal to P B squared divided by P A that we know from our basics.
Now, therefore, this P B squared by what is also can be written as P T times Y B squared divided by P T Y A P T squared. So, this becomes P T Y B squared divided by Y A. Okay. So, essentially our equilibrium representation gives you this K P is given by P T Y B by Y A. Now, Y B and Y A can be replaced from from here. So, suppose I do that we get K P equal to P T E B squared divided by E B plus E A divided by E A. Now, we are looking at environment E. So, let us do at environment E first and then do the environment f. So, k p equal to p t y b squared is coming from here e b squared e a plus e b whole square denominator y a also e a. So, it is how. So, 1 e b plus e a has got cancelled. So, we get this kind of equations. I can simplify this further by writing p t into we notice we notice from this equation suppose I call this as from equation 1. So, you can see here from E b can be put from here as 2 E a 2 minus 2 E a. So, let me put it as 2 minus of 2 E a that is E b that is E b it comes from equation 1 divided by E b uh, E b plus E b E b is what E b is let me let me write this like this 2 minus of twice E A plus E A. Is it okay? I have replaced uh, E B plus E A like this and multiplied by E A equal to K P. Is that clear what we are saying? What did we say? Let me just run through this whole thing once again. If we have two environments 1 at 80, 1 at 20. The reaction N 2 O 4 to N O 2 is instantaneous. Therefore, the compositions of this mixture at 80 will be determined by its equilibria. Similarly, the composition of the mixture at 20 will be determined by the equilibria. Okay, the equilibrium constant at 80 and 20 are given. Okay. Now, we want to since both these environments are well mixed. So, we are saying that K p value which is P b squared by P a which can be expressed in terms of y b and y a and so on. Therefore, we are able to express K p in terms of total pressure and mole fractions and mole fraction of y a and y b comes from basics and we also know from the problem statement that 1 mole per second is circulating in the system. Therefore, E a plus half of E b equal to e equal to 1. Why this word half is coming is because we notice that N 2 O 4 has 1 mole of nitrogen while N O 2 has only half mole of nitrogen. That is why when we say 1 mole of nitrogen is circulating in the system, it means that E a plus half E b is 1. So, that is why we have got this equation 1. All right. So, this equation uh, which you have got P t multiplied by all this now involves only E a. Let me just write this once again. So, our equation for so K p equal to P t times 2 minus of twice E a divided by 2 minus of twice E a plus E a within bracket of E a or it is P t times 2 minus of twice E a divided by 2 minus of E a times E a equal to K p which is equal to 5.8 at 80 degrees centigrade. Okay. Let me just go through this. There is a square missing here. The square missing here. Square missing here. Please notice, notice that it is E B squared. I just forgot the, the square. Okay. So, it can be simplified further equal to K P equal to 4 P T into 1 minus of E A whole squared divided by 2 minus of E A multiplied by E A. Okay, and that K P is 5.8 at 80 degrees C. Now, this uh, this quadratic I mean can be easily solved. Let us see how the solutions look like. So, let us expand this and uh, 
and simplify when you do all that it, it you get 11.6 ea minus of 5.8 ea squared equal to 4 times 1 minus of twice ea plus ea squared let me just check how it looks like 1 minus so this is 1 minus ea squared so so, we have expanding this. So, when you do that, when you do that, you get this, this term is correct. And now, 2 E A divided by, okay. now it is 2 multiplied by 5.8 is 11.6, that makes, uh, makes sense. Okay. And then 5.8 E A, that also makes sense. Okay. Everything seems all right. So essentially, we have, as of course, we have taken P T, the total pressure, equal to one atmosphere. That is an assumption. Okay. So this is fine. This basically expanding, uh, multiplying, cross multiplying, and then simplifying. So it's fine. So we have here. So let me. So it is four nine point six e a squared. Is it correct? Four. 9.6 E A squared okay. minus 8 E A and therefore, uh, minus and minus 8 19.6 E A. So, I have taken this also plus 4 equal to 0. So, what is the solution? So, E A equal to 19.6 plus or minus root of B squared is uh, 19.6 whole squared okay, minus 4 times 9.6 times 4 divided by 2 into 9.6 or this 9.8 and 9.6 E squared where is e equal to 9.8 sorry. Okay. So, this gives you solution E A equal to what is E A equal to 0.23 or 1.76. These are the two solutions we get. Okay. So, E B equal to 2 minus of twice E A, therefore, that gives you 2 minus of 2 E A. Now, if you put this, this when you put 1.76 here, then E B becomes negative. Therefore, this solution is not admissible. Therefore, the solution which is admissible is the second one 2 into 0.23 that is equal to 1.76. So, mole per second. So, E A this solution is admissible. So, many mole per second. Okay. So, what have we done? What we have done is we have taken this exercise to 80 degrees and 20 degrees. We recognize that the reaction is instantaneous and therefore, the compositions are described by the equilibria okay, at 80 degrees and based on that and then the condition that one mole is circulating through the system which means that E A plus half of E B equal to 1. So, we put that condition and then uh, we sort of went through the material balance to find out what is the the value that is appropriate. So, this is as far as E uh, environment uh, E is concerned. So, we have to repeat this for environment F because what is the situation in environment F? So, this is environment environment F. What is the situation in environment F? You have K P equal to 0.45 equal to P T times P T times P B squared sorry P B squared sorry P B squared divided by P A. So, this is 0.45. So, 0.45 equal to P T multiplied by Y B squared divided by Y A. Okay. And now that is equal to Y B we can substitute for Y B in terms of F A and F B and so on. So, let us do that. We have done that already. So, we do not have to do it again. So, our K P equal to 0.45 equal to K P will look like. So, we can do not have to write the whole thing once again. 
or equations now will go 4 p t within brackets of 1 minus of f a whole squared divided by 2 minus of 2 f a multiplied by f a. So, it will be identical what we got before there it is 4 p t 1 minus e a squared here it will be 1 minus the f a squared denominated 2 minus 2 e e a to 2 minus 2 f a. So, it is the same kind of uh, it is similar. Okay. Now, then we can cross multiply and simplify and so on when you do that you get 0 0.9 f a minus 0.45 f a squared equal to 4 times 1 minus of twice f a plus f a squared. Let us see whether you got it right. So, 0 0.9, so this is uh, 2 multiplied by 0 0.9 f a all right. So, it is once again 0 0.9 f a 0.42 into 0.45 why is this 0.45 f a 2 minus of 2 f a we made we missed a plus f a is there. So, okay, fine. So, that f a I had missed out. So, that is a mistake. So, 2 minus of f a. So, this so it simplifies as 4.45 f a squared minus of 8.9 f a plus 4 equal to 0. Let me see if this is correct. Okay. So, for 2 8 f a if you take it to this side 8 minus of 0 0.9 have we got 0 0.9 f a. So, it is 0 0.8 minus of 8.9 is it 8.9 correct okay this term is cut this term is taken this term is taken now 0.45 f a squared 4 plus 4 f a squared this is this is fine and then plus 4 it's okay so this is the equation so let us look at the solution to this so the differential equation this is once again we are in environment environment f so our equation is 4.45 f a squared minus of 8.9 f a plus 4 equal to 0. Therefore, f a equal to minus b plus or minus b squared minus of 4 into 4.45 into 4 divided by 2 into 4.45. So, this is the solution and uh, it turns out that it looks something like this 2.83 divided by 2 multiplied by 4.45. So, that gives us two solutions 0 0.68 and 1.317 mole per second. And we also know that f b equal to 2 minus 2 f a. See, So, this is f a therefore, f b equal to 2 minus of 2 times f a if it is 0.68 it comes to 1.32. So, 0.68 is that right. So, it is f b. So, it is uh, 2 is 1.36.64 mole per second. Okay. And uh, this solution is not admissible because 2 times becomes uh, it uh, violates the uh, principle that is. So, we have what we have done is that by setting out the equations under equilibria we have been able to determine the value of E a and E b. Let us just look at our system once again, so that we understand what we are doing what are we saying now is based on the thermodynamics of the system that we have we have f a and f b this these numbers are this is 0 0.64 f a is 0 0.64 sorry f a is 0 0.68 f b is 0 0.64 and e a 0 0.23 and e b 
where is E B? E A is 0.23 and E B 1.76. So, you can add up the two okay. E A plus E B. Okay. So, if you divide this by 2, it is 0 0.88 and it comes out to about 1, it is some calculation mistake therefore, it does not add exactly to 1. So, what we are saying is that once you impose the condition that they are in equilibrium that is they are instantaneous at 80 and 20 and uh, assuming that they are all well mixed vessels and therefore, the uh, composition that they exit is same as composition inside the equipment and so on, we get value for E A, E B, F A and F B. Now, the question that is of interest to us is to find out what is the amount of energy that we can get out of this. So, to do this what we have to do is we have to do the energy balance let us do that. So, we have the energy balance what is our energy balance we say that the enthalpy at 80 equal to H A E A plus H B E B. Okay. That means, the enthalpy of component A multiplied flow rate of component A enthalpy of component B multiplied flow rate of component B. Now, we have to just calculate what is H A at 80 equal to H A at 25 plus C P into T minus T R. Okay. So, this is from the data which is given is 22.3 plus 25 multiplied by 20 multiplied by 80 minus 25. Is that clear? Because the environment is at 80. So, this becomes so H A at 80 equal to 22.3 plus 25 into 80 minus 25 is 55. Okay. So, it becomes 3605. Okay. Is this uh, does it make sense? What is 25? 25 is what? What are the units of I just let us check the numbers because many of these things the units have to be properly taken care it is calories per mole while all these are in kilo calories. So, 22 okay, the H A is 22 because um, and this is calories per mole. So, it is 0 0.125. So, it is divided by 1000. So, this is not an important quantity. So, it is something like 22.3 kilo cal per mole okay, H A at 80. Similarly, we have to find out so, what is uh, the total this is this is the H component A such this component A at 22.3 H component B at uh, this is for component B at 80 degrees is H B at 25 plus C P uh, T minus of T R it is a small quantity we will neglect this not a very important quantity. So, H B at 25 we can calculate from the data that is given to us H B at 25 the data is given to us here 23.1 and 2.23 sorry 2.23 and uh, uh, so that comes out to be from the data it turns out to be 7.9 it is 7.9 kilo calories per, per mole. Okay. So, what we have done we have calculated what is the enthalpy of component A what is the enthalpy of component B. Therefore, we can now calculate what is the energy that is associated with the let us do that. What is the energy associated with the stream? Okay. What is the energy associated with the stream? Fairly straightforward so, energy associated that means, total amount of energy at the environment 80 is E A H A plus E B H B. What is E A? V A is 0.23 multiplied by 22.3 okay, and then E B is 1.54 multiplied by uh, it is 7.7.96. So, so many kilo calories per second is this clear what we are saying is the, we know the molar flows 
our system, please do not forget our system. Our system is, let me just get hold of the, uh, we can draw it once again. This is our system is, okay. this, is, this is E and this is F. This is going like this, this is coming like this. This stream E A is 0.23, this 0.23, uh, E A is 0.23 and E B is 1.54. So, if you divide this by uh, by 2, it is 7.7. .7. So, 0.77 from 0.23 is 1. So, it sort of satisfies the material. Okay. So, this is as far as at 80 degree stream is concerned, this is 20. So, we want to do the same thing at uh, what happens at 20, we repeat that at 20. So, we calculate what is the energy associated with streams that are leaving uh, the, uh, so for the 20. So, H, so the total amount of energy at environment at 20 is F A H A plus F B H B, this we know. Okay. So, H A at 20, we have to calculate that is equal to 2.23 plus that C P term, C P T minus of T R, which we will neglect. Okay. And similarly, we have H B at 20 equal to 7.96 okay, minus C p that term delta t term will be like so it is 7.96. So, our h t at 20 equal to uh, e sorry f a h a plus f b h b. So, f a is how much f a is 0.68 h a is 2.23 and then f b is f b is 0.64 multiplied by h b and the, the h b is 7.96 so many kilocals per second okay so uh, so this is roughly uh, 2 by 3 so that's about this is about point, point 0.74 this is uh, 8 4 point it's about 5.1 that's about 5.84 kcal per second this is energy balance h a h b just a minute we want to calculate h t what is h t uh, at 80 let's just quickly calculate this that's about one fourth one fourth of this would be about 5.4, 5.5, and this is 8, this is about 12, that is about 17.5 kilocal per second. So, what we are saying now is the energy that is the energy that is in this stream is 17.5 units, the energy that is in this living stream is 5.84 units. Okay. What are we saying? What we are saying is that energy that is leaving the uh, 80 degree centigrade uh, environment is 17.5 units, what is leaving is 5 point. Therefore, the energy that is delivered that means, what is taken up minus what is this energy that is delivered would be therefore, energy released released into into environment F equal to 17.5 minus 17.5 how much is this? 5.84. This is 5.84 minus 5.84. 5.84 that turns out to be 11.5 is about 11.64 um, kilo cal per second. Now, if I want to calculate this uh, nitrogen circulating is 1 mole per second or 14 grams per second. Okay. One mole is 14 grams. Therefore, the energy that is delivered to the stream per gram of nitrogen, so specific energy delivery huh? delivered is 11.64 divided by 0 0.014 kg. Okay. So, that is about uh, 0 0.014 is about 7, it is about 70, 77. So, it is about 780 
kilo cal per kg nitrogen. You, we understand. What are we saying? This is an important figure. We have we have been able to transfer 11.64 kilocalories per second into environment F. So much of space heating has been provided. To do this, we had to circulate one mole per second of nitrogen of 28. I'm sorry, it's 28. So it is 390. It's 390 kilocalories per kg nitrogen. So what this uh, working fluid, which is uh, N2O4 NO2 system, is able to do theoretically based on whatever numbers we have generated, is that it is able to pick up uh, and deliver 11.64 kilocalories per second for one mole per second of nitrogen circulating. One mole is 28 uh, grams per second. So I have divided this by 28.028. So let me just do this once again. The numbers are in your mind. These are important numbers which may have some implications later. So energy delivered, energy delivered equal to energy delivered equal to 11.64 divided by 0 0.028. That comes to about 390 kilocalories per kg. So, we are able to deliver 390 kilocalories per kg of nitrogen circulating. Now, this uh, these numbers uh, are very important, we will come to that in a minute. Now, the, the context to looking at this uh, should not be forgotten. The context is the following N2O4 NO2 uh, is, a, is a system in which there is no phase change, that means everything is in the gas phase. Okay, number 1. Now, therefore, we can look at fairly high temperatures may be 120, 140 depending upon the kind of low temperature heat that might be available in your environment. Okay. So, if your low temperature heat available is 120, 130, 140 whatever, then clearly if you are looking at steam as a working fluid, then we are looking at much higher pressures. So, essentially it is the high pressure that is to be handled with steam which makes the use of uh, uh, steam a little expensive because of course, steam is uh, not corrosive, it has got great properties and so on, but you have to go to higher pressures. Here that uh, feature is not there. And second thing which is equally important is that we are able to transfer fair, fairly large quantity of uh, you know uh, energy, it is not small as you can see here it is 390 kilocalories per kilogram. Okay. Now, we can do a similar kind of calculations for work also and I wanted to do that, I will do that right away just to uh, uh, go these calculations because it is not very difficult to do. So, I will not give you the details. So, we have here if you do the same calculation for work you find that work output measured as G T that is G G T at 80 minus G T at 20. That means, how do you find G T? G T is calculated as E A G A plus E B G B. Similarly, G T at 20 is calculated as F A G so F A G A plus F B G B. Okay. Now, G A and G B to calculate G A and G B you should know the uh, standard heats of uh, free energy format all that is given. So, I put all those numbers and got this. So, when you put in all your numbers it looks something like this that work output equal to about 17 kilocal per second and the uh, nitrogen circulation circulation is 1 mole per second or 28 grams per second okay therefore specific output equal to 17 kilocal divided by 0 0.028 okay now, 
is something like uh, how much is it 84 about 3 that is 30 is about 510 uh, kilocal per kilogram of nitrogen sulfur. If indeed we want to drive uh, uh, an engine between 80 and 20, you get about 510 kilocalories per gram of nitrogen. Okay. This is the, uh, the difference between if you are looking at uh, uh, steam to do the same kind of work, we find that the, the amount of work you will get is very, very small because of variety of reasons. One of course, that at 80 and 20, the, the energy that is contained in steam is not large enough and the temperature differences are also not uh, sufficient and so on. So, just to cut this long story short, what we have tried to say here is that if you are using uh, this working fluid, which is uh, NO2 and 2O4 working fluid, then we are able to derive uh, pick up heat from a low temperature source may be 80 degrees, may be 100, may be 120, 130. And since uh, it is there is no phase change involved in this system, you do not have to go to higher pressures and therefore, it is a huge advantage from the point of view of recovery of heat at low temperatures. Okay. So, here is an instance of a chemically reacting system uh, being used uh, f uh, to, uh, to pick up heat and deliver heat or to actually pick up the energy and deliver work. Okay. And this is not a very common uh, system that you will see in daily life N 2 O 4 N O 2 is highly corrosive and therefore, it is not used uh, commercially, that, but the point of uh, discussing this here is not so much that it is not commercially used, but to point out the fact that if you can think of making a synthetic substance, which is uh, inert which has got this kind of properties, which can be used as a working fluid and therefore, we do not have to look at steam and there will be a great advantage as far as commercial and then daily life is concerned and it would be a great product if you can think of a product like this. And that is the context of looking at this example to illustrate how we can use a chemically reacting system to give work or to give heat as might be the case.